Okay, so let's get started with doing this wash for the underlayer. And the top left corner, I'm going to mix up a grayed down blue. So I just add a little tiny bit of rose and yellow to that French ultramarine and painting around the candles. Don't worry if you go over one of them, you can just come back later with some gouache. Pull them back out again. Uh, but next to this blue gray wash, I'm going to start with the gold. And I'll add in some touches of rose here and there, warm it up even more. And I'll pull this part of the wash all the way over on top of the people and just to the tabletops. I want to keep those tabletops white because they're getting hit by the light back there. And here and there, just adding in some bits of kind of warmish brown. If you pull in some rose and a little bit of blue, just get that color juicy enough. And I'm going around these other, I think they're candles on the other side over here on the right. And try to get even a little bit warmer. And this time I'm going to go around those two main characters. And then stop there for that first part of the wash. So now I'm going to start the bottom half of the wash, and so I have that cadmium red, which I will add a bit of French ultramarine to dull it down a little bit. And I'll have some that's got some gold mixed into it too, so I've got some cooler, some warmer. And keeping that tabletop and going around that chair a little bit. And I'm putting that nice warm gold where that chair is going to be under that table and then switch to kind of a grayer mix. So here I'll even add in some of the Payne's gray. And these guys, you can go over their table. This kind of connects everything, but I am keeping the jar and coffee dish clear. So building up the grays in the corner and pull that on down. So to get that little bit of a smoother wash, I am going to tilt up my page and I'm spritzing it lightly and letting it fall down and bring it all nice and smooth. Now I'm going in for the mid-tones, and if you mix a little bit of everything, you get some nice grays. And I'm going to kind of dry brush scrape these on, just lightly build up these mid-tones. So going around the candles. And here, trying to make each brush stroke count, not going over things repeatedly. And I intentionally brought that one down over that guy's head. I'm going to have things all be united here. So now, some of these marks, I'm going to spritz over them and use a paper towel to kind of smear some of it away and get kind of a dreamy, foggy look in that background area. I want things to be a little bit broken up and not too heavy. Smudge this part again. So now for the other side, I'm 
going to mix in some Payne's Gray to that gold and make some nice warm shadows, which are the cast shadows from these objects over here. They're a little too dark, so I just smudged it off, spritz it a little bit. And I'm using the sides of the brush hair so that I get as much coverage with one motion as possible. So now I'm going to step it up with a darker shadow, but it's going to be a cool one, so it's heavier on the blue. And I want it to be a little bit broken up in dry brush. And these cool shadows are going to come across here and connect with the silhouettes with these guys in the background. And adding some warmer tones in where the flesh areas are. So I want this guy to be like a step darker than that window pane behind him or the windowsill. So these guys will pop out in front of that window. Um, this guy connecting to the guy in front of him, so everything is all connected here. And then we pull those shapes together underneath the table. Uh, I'm just adjusting my darks as I go, make sure the values are good. And give this guy a little tie. And I'm touching up just some warm kind of brown mix for the skin. 
that's just the yellow and the cadmium with a little bit of blue. This guy's face needs to be built up a little bit darker. He's a bit more on the shady side. All right, so now I'm gonna start bringing in some of these bright cadmium reds. And that is why we reserved this part of the chair. And spritzing it here and there, kind of softening some edges, letting it flare out a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of skin on this guy too, so I'm starting kind of more orangey brown. And on the closest part of his face, I get nice and bright with the red, and then the shadowy sides are a little bit more purple. So mix some of that rose and French ultramarine to get some nice purples for that shadow side. Not worrying about any details about his eyes or anything yet, just kind of slowly building this up and giving him a hand. And then I'm going to do that bottle nice and bright red here and give it a drip. So I'm holding it up and with my brush upside down I just keep adding more water and color until that drips down for me. Here we go. So I'm filling all of this in with that gray again. And then for her, I'm connecting her a little bit. Keeping her highlights, going around those objects on the table. And I just want that to be kind of like a soft edge between her and him. And then I'm going to add some more drips, which are going to become part of her chair. So 
So now just some, some more darks for her hair here. And I'm pulling the dark in while her back is still wet so her hair kind of bleeds into that back area. Okay, so now we start putting in some of the details and I'm working on the chandelier. So that's kind of a warm brownish mix. I'm keeping the highlights, I'm trying to. And then I use some of the Payne's Gray to shade it a little bit so it's got some sense of form. And with just the tip of my brush, I am making some kind of wiggly marks for the details. I'm trying to get some nice pretty looking brush strokes here. And then the shadows build up a little bit on those candles that are on the chandelier. And I used kind of a warm gray so that they come out from that cool gray behind them. So just really careful with these little brush stroke moves. I want them to be light and broken up. So I kind of practice that motion before I set it on the paper. Now I'm touching up these on the other side, which I think are candles, adding more gold to them, and then the darks go around. And I just kind of scrape these on all dry brush. So I'm getting extra dark here, and this is kind of on the side where the coat rack is. So I'm putting in my coat rack and I'm trying to get some nice shapes with these hooks for the coats. And here is a jacket hanging off. So also just kind of carving out around these people here. Giving this guy some hair. So we want these things to all be a little bit connected so they're not completely separate. but still give them some definition at the same time. Some loose, funky shapes for these picture frames on the wall.
So I noticed I've got some kind of big gaps here where it needs more shadow. So I'm going to touch up those shadows a little bit more, get it a little bit more believable. And now we'll bring in the darks on the other side. So these darks carve out that table, give us the shape for our chair. And I gave that seat some extra gold. And there's just little hints of openings in the back where those guys' legs and things are. Mostly these darks are coming all the way across and connecting our shapes. Now I want to put that dark wash coming down and shaping in the table so it's easier for me to just flip it upside down and put that dark in and then do a bit of a graded wash coming up. There we go. And then shape that table a little bit better. So I'm going to get that really dark under the foreground couples table. But use some of those drips and things to kind of make the shapes of her chair. The more it paints itself, usually the better. So now I'm kind of adding in some fake drip marks and these are like the chairs and just cool little design elements. And then these are like Reflective shadows coming down, some lines pushing you in. Um, these grays need to be a bit heavier and I'm using that same gray to kind of make some eye sockets. And more of a shadow where the chin's at. So for those glasses, I only put a couple of tiny touches of the darks for the rims. He is leaning back having that cup of coffee, so they are mostly being blocked by that coffee.
So I've got my gray is good enough. Now I gotta connect him with this dark. It will connect to the other darks and also be part of his jacket. And also I gave him a little bow tie and filled in her a little bit better by the hair. So these things on the table need to be defined a bit more. And they also have like some little reflections on the table there, shadows. So I'm gonna just give him some more color. He needs a little more pop. So does she brighten these guys up a bit? So now I'm going to do the tiny details on the window and I pulled out my little liner brush to scrape these on and I'm trying to hold the brush far away to keep all my marks loose and wiggly. And then the writing is backwards because it's in the window so I made my Cafe Louisa. And for final touches, I'm going to make my own opaque lavender here by just mixing purple and putting it into my white gouache and adding just a couple little dabs of opaque. And then I'll go to the white gouache, just straight white, and fix up a couple little highlights here and there. And then that's it for this one. Oh, I almost forgot, you gotta add that steam coming out of the coffee cup, that kind of was what makes this. So I used some watered down gouache and then smudged it with a paper towel to soften it and then that made perfect steam. <laughs> 